Hi, I've made a plugin for Godot 4 that implements a drop-in replacement for the, the Godot 4 tilemap terrain or auto-tiling system. It's called Better Terrain. It's very easy to add it to your project. You just download the code. You can download the zip file or use git ssh if you know how to do that. Once you've got the zip file Once you've got the zip file, just copy the add-ons folder or extract the add-ons folder directly into your project. Just like that, it should show up. Go into your project settings, go to the plugins tab, enable the plugin, and then restart Godot. There we go. Once you've done that, when you click on a tile map, you should see a new tab down the bottom called Terrain. This is a tile map that I received from itch.io. I'll put the link in the description if you want it. But let's show some examples of how to make terrain using Better Terrain System. So on the left we have the terrains that we've defined. Currently there isn't any. And on the right we have the tiles that we're working with. And these are just the same tiles you see in the tile set. All your atlases and your alternate tiles. So let's define a terrain. We can give it a name. Let's call it Earth. A color, which is just whatever you want. The name and the color are really just for you. And a mode. There's match tiles, which just matches against adjacent and diagonal tiles. Match vertices, which analyzes the vertices around the tile to find the best terrain match and categories, which are for more advanced terrain matching. Let's just do match tiles to start with. So now we have a new terrain called Earth, and it's green. Now we can use this first tool here, Paint Terrain Types, to decide what tiles are going to be in this terrain. So I'm going to put these ones in, this one, and these ones. There we go. Now if I draw with that terrain, it's all jumbled up because I haven't told it how to match the terrains together. So I'm going to use this tool, Paint Terrain Connecting Types, and I'm going to draw in the connections between terrains. Now don't just draw everything you see, you've got to think about how you want the terrains to connect together. So for these ones, corners, sides and center pieces, they just get picked if matching trains or orthogonally next to them. Similarly these ones are just horizontal and this one just if it can't find a good match elsewhere it will fall back to this one. So now when we draw with this we should get something that's a bit more sensible. There we go. So that's pretty good. It's not perfect. There's not a good tile for this. It picks this one which makes sense but the graphics don't really have a, a really good suitable tile for there. And as you can see, you can connect them up however you like. And this is a very limited set, so not all the combinations will make sense. You can use right click to erase. That's very nice. Let's make another one for the bricks. These bricks have a little bit more to them. So I'm going to call this one bricks. I like to make the color slightly different so I can see what I'm doing. So that nice red works for me. Now I'm just filling in the connections. And now we're ready to draw with some bricks. There we go, that works really well. Oh, once you've finished setting up the bits, you can deselect these tools so that you cannot accidentally make changes to the terrain. Also note, the connections that are shown are the ones for the type you have selected. Other than the pen tool, there's also a rectangle tool, which draws rectangles, and a fill tool. There we go. We can fill like that. Easy peasy. Let's look at some more advanced connections. What's useful about this system is that as you can see, 
The connections are only shown for the type that you have selected, but also you can connect different types to different terrains. So let's make an example of that. Let's add in the ladder. The ladder is just going to be this and very easily connects like that. So now we can draw ladders. That's very good. But let's make them connect directly into the brick. And we can do that simply by adding some brick connectors to the ladder. Now, when it's on the grass, the ladder rests on top. But when it's the brick, the ladder connects. So once again, let's look at it from underneath. connects to the dirt, oh sorry, it connects to the bricks but it does not connect to the dirt and that's because the ladder has the peering type of the bricks but it does not have the peering type of the earth. Similarly you could use this to make all earth and brick types connect so I could fill in all of these connections but instead I'm going to use a different method. I'm actually going to take out all of these connections and use a category to combine these two different tile types together. So I'm going to take out all the uh, earth connectors and all the brick connectors. Then I'm going to add a new category. I'm just going to call it blocks. And I'm going to make it a nice blue color. So that's a category. Now categories you can assign to tiles. Let's make that gem a category. But they don't do anything. They don't have any connection rules by themselves. Other tiles can connect them. So I could make the ladder connect to the gem. I don't know why I would do that, but it's an option. But more importantly, you can bring terrains into different categories. So the earth will make that a type of block and bricks will also make a type of block. Now using the categories I'll just draw the connections between these like I had before. Whoops. Easy peasy. Nice and quick. So now they only connect to the category blocks, but they're both the category of blocks. So it won't update stuff I've already drawn, but if I start drawing something new, okay, here's the earth, that still works the same, and here's the bricks. Now they connect together. This is similar to the uh, scripting solution that you could use in Godot 3, where you bind different types of auto tiles together. But this is completely fine grained. You can, here I've just connected everything up, but you can say, oh, horizontally it does connect to any type, and vertically it doesn't. And that's quite easily demonstrated because the ladder still connects only to the brick. So the ladder here does not connect to the earth but it does connect to the bricks. So that brick connector there still connects to the bricks, even though the bricks are now connecting to the earth via blocks. So as you can see, using both categories and connecting to different types, you can build up a, a fairly versatile and powerful set of connection rules that will allow you to make tiles look good quickly. At least that's the idea. Something that's quite important to me when designing this was to keep the API nice and simple. Um, I know the new tile map has quite a verbose API, which is fine. It's got a lot of power. I could implement this quite easily on top of it. But for just slapping tiles down in the middle of a game, it's nice to have something that's a little bit simpler. So you can access the better terrain on top of any tile map just by uh, passing in I should actually probably call a function set cell yep there we go set cell 
is the autocomplete going to be my friend? Not today. Godot 4 still is not very kind with autocomplete. I'm sure that will come in time. You can look at the whole source code. It's all just um, GD script. Where am I looking? There is comments, and if you press F1, sometimes it shows up. Again, that seems a little bit flaky at the moment. Hopefully, as Godot 4 is patched, that will get better. But um, you just call set cell. You pass in the tile map, the layer number, the, the coordinate, and the type of terrain, that is uh, a zero based index, so zero, one, two, three. So if I want to set Earth, pass in zero onto the coordinate on whichever layer. And that's it. You set the cells, and then just like in Godot 3, you have to call an update function. So this is update terrain cells or cell, and there's also an area update function. So that's a very rough overview of the API. There's also functions for creating change sets in uh, threaded worker pools that you can apply to a map later. So you can do large scale changes, plan them up in advance, calculate them in advance and apply them in the space of one frame without dipping your frames per second. So that's a quick overview of better terrain. Um, it works alongside the built-in terrain system which you can access up here. Uh, so you could actually use both if you really wanted. Uh, I know some people like this, some people don't. If you don't like it, maybe this will work for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on Discord or post on the GitHub, and I'll probably respond. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know how you get on.